to my corner. We are now on day six, and I have been really excited about seeing everyone's process throughout this entire thing. I've seen from people completing their first panel to completing the entire front, and I just think that's really awesome. And as you know, I'm always happy to help with any question that you have. And today, we're actually going to start talking about, well, I'm going to show you the back, and we're going to start talking about sleeves. So get excited, and <laughs> let's get started. So here is my completed back. Please keep in mind that this sweater is oversized, so if you're looking at it and it's kind of freaking you out, just don't panic. It's, it is oversized, and you know, it just, it looks scary when it's all spread out, but once you know you put it on and it molds to, to you, it'll, it'll be fine. So just don't freak out if you're looking at it and you're saying, this looks more like a blanket than a sweater. Just, you know, this is where we say trust the process and we'll be good. But, um, yeah, I, uh, this is what it looks like. Just keep in mind as you're going along where your stitches show, like where the stitch line show, and where it doesn't. Okay, so now that we have our front panels done and then we obviously have our back piece done, what we're gonna do is connect them and what, we're, what we do is connect them obviously from the top. Now, if you're binding off or you know taking your square off the needle, like I am, you should be getting this kind of braided piece and what I did, and it's kind of like a guide too, um, is do the stitched line underneath that braided piece. Now, I know what you're thinking when we were connecting our panels, our stitch is on the inside. Well, I looked at the official pattern and I saw that for probably decorative reasons, he did his stitching, his back stitch on the outside. And since I want you guys to have literally the closest thing you can to Harry's sweater, we'll be doing it the way that he said. So it's literally the same back stitch that we've been doing, it's just on the front. And I recommend you doing this on a hard surface because our squares, as you probably have already seen, tend to stretch. So make sure that when you're lining your squares up, do not stretch out your squares because I am fearful that when you're actually putting it together that your sleeve will not be here or even here. It might be down here or something. It might not even be where it's supposed to be. So just don't stretch out your squares, do it on a hard surface. Obviously we're using our thin red yarn and our tapestry needle, the same thing that we used to connect our panels, we're doing it to connect it from the top. So something that you did with connecting your panels, you're doing it again is, and it's just a good thing to do just to make sure your, stre your squares don't stretch out, is to pin it in place and then do your stitched line. And once you have this sort of sweater vest, um, in order to you know start measuring your sleeves or just know where your sweater hits you on your arm, is to try it on. So you're gonna have some kind of poncho sweater vest type thing, and you'll try it on and you'll see where your, your last panel, so your third panel on each side, will hit you. And that's where you're gonna kind of know, okay, like where, like my sleeve hits me here, or my sleeve hits me here. That's where you start measuring your sleeve and how that goes. And another thing, just kind of like a tip, so you can actually see what it kind of looks like closed, even though we're not closing it yet, is to safety pin these bottom two like squares together because our sleeves are four squares, but obviously it's two on two for the back, two for the front. So when you close it, if you close it here this will be your armhole. So that just gives you a better idea of the fit of the sweater. Okay, so here I have my sweater on, so you guys can see. The sleeves, I liked them to be kind of at my fingertips. If you can see, kind of that's where I stopped it. You can see a little bit of my fingers, but if you look at the original sweater, it actually goes past the fingers. So this, the length that you do your sleeves, it all depends on how you want your sleeve to look, how you want your sleeve to fit, and just where you want it to hit. If you notice this yellow line, that is where your sleeve starts, because if I extend my arm, you will see this is our third panel, where this stitched yellow line is, is where the sleeve starts. So, yes, the sleeve is three panels, or three squares, that make up a panel, and there's four panels, because it's two on the front of your arm, and two on the back. So, I will have the original sweater linked below so you can see one, the fit, 
and to just have a general idea of where the sleeve hits. Like I said, this all depends on where you want it to hit, so what I suggest doing is trying it on when you have kind of the back and the front, you know, connected. Try it on, see where your third panel hits, and then from there, you know, you measure how long your sleeve to be. This red cuff, the ribbing, is seven centimeters or two, two inches and three quarters, I believe, is what the conversion is. Um, but that's what it is, depending on where you want that red to hit. Like I said, I like it at my fingertips. Depending on where you want it, you say, okay, I want it here. You measure your seven, seven centimeters, and then that's where you start measuring up. Now, a very important detail is, that the width of the square does not change. So if you have, for example, I have six inches coming across on the sweater that I'm making for this tutorial, I have six inches across and uh, five and a half inches going up. Now, the width doesn't change. The height is where you can make your adjustments and as you can see, literally, like these aren't even squares on my sleeve. It's, they look like rectangles because some stretch out more than others and then it was just the adjustments that I had made. So, yes, that's exactly, like, you know, you can just make your adjustments there or, you know, not make adjustments if you want it to be like the original sweater and past your sleeves. Just for size reference, I am a small. This sweater that I made back in April is tailored to my measurements. Now, the sweater I'm making for this tutorial is very close to J.W. Anderson's measurements, so it'd be a true medium, and the one who will be modeling it at the end is my sister, who is average size, average build, and she is 5'7", so just be on the lookout for that for when you actually see, I guess, fit, because a lot of people are looking at either pictures of Harry, who most likely had his customized um, to his size, or they're looking at me and they're asking me about my size, but yes, I tailored this to my measurements, and the one that I'm making is close to a true medium. So here is a close-up of my sleeves. As you can see, it is four panels, and they are the same exact design on both sides. So here is, I drew it out just so you guys can see it. So we have our four panels that are made up of three squares, and then obviously these two signify the jacquard square. And also, just to show you guys, that here, this is the yellow stitched line I was talking about, that this is where the sleeve begins. I've included this pattern here laid out for you, so you can screenshot this or pause the video, do what you need to do to know where your squares are going to be in your sleeve. And as always, if you have any questions, feel free to message me on any of my social media and I'll try my best to help you and remember to always treat people with kindness.